I want to talk about a few forgotten pioneers, whether it be inventors, cultures or forgotten legends of some kind. Firstly, talking about Nikola Tesla I think is just another fantasy put out there to give the people a bit of hope that there was a hero in the past who wanted to give us free energy. I've mentioned it many times and I've posted a few videos in the past about how Tesla didn't invent much and Einstein was more of a pop star that was lost amongst genius minds. The alternative current was invented by the Italian Hippocrates of Pixie, who was another unsung genius history has forgot. The induction call by British inventors Michael Faraday and later Nicholas Callahan. Gullard and Gibbs invented the Transformer. Also, Tesla didn't invent the radio either. Alexander Popov and then later Marconi perfected the radio to give it to the world. But what I'd love to bring your attention to is this photo taken exactly a hundred years ago this month in New Jersey of the most intelligent people in the last few thousand years anyway, I'd say. In this photo, we have Irvine Langmer, who came up with the arrangement of electrons, atoms and molecules. Alfred Goldsmith, who was the director of research and engineering at Marconi, General Electric, and then later RCA. We also have Niels Bohr, Ernst Berg, supposed geniuses Einstein and Nikola Tesla, but no, it was Steinmetz who, even though he was incapacitated and had problems, was far more intelligent than all of these minds put together. He was their master, their hero, the one they all looked up to. And in the end, after he died, they all worked for either General Electric or Edison, who bought all of his patents and then later used them all. to talk about uh, genuine suppressed technology and here's an image of somebody that you've probably never heard of Charles Proteus Steinmetz he actually should be the hero of all little people um, he was born deformed uh, crooked at the hip uh, he is a little person here he is smoking his big old cigar in front of the desk um, here's one of his books called electrical discharges waves and impulses almost all of his books are free download on uh, archive.org and why is Charles Proteus Steinmetz so incredibly important not only did he amass a pile of patents nearly as high as that of Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla's AC generator never would have worked if not it did work but it didn't really work work uh, it took uh, laminated steel and actually the refinements of Charles Proteus Steinmetz and his understandings of transient currents and all the odd things of phase difference and all there's a lot of really hardcore nuance of electrical theory that are necessary for the refinements of the AC generator to get it to work correctly. In other words, Nikola Tesla's AC generator invention, while absolutely wonderful and stunning, never would have been perfected without uh, the patents and the ingenuity of Charles Proteus Steinmetz. So I'll let you take a quick look at some of the, uh, and this is not all of them, the books that he wrote. General Electric actually considered him a god at one point, not literally, but they gave him, uh, back in the day, a, an entire wing of General Electric and carte blanche to buy whatever the hell he wanted because he was literally a god of electrical engineering. Um, elementary discharges on electrical discharges, waves and impulses and transient currents, engineering mathematics, lectures at uh, countless colleges, uh, the nature of electricity, uh, lectures on uh, general electrical and, and uh, advanced electrical engineering, um, radiation, light and illumination, systems of electrical transmission and distribution. Um, I, it's just unending. He was an absolute dynamo of invention and ingenuity. His books are incredibly heavy um, with electrical uh, math and theory and uh, like I said his, his patents are, are countless. It's just absolutely uh, brilliant. Uh, one of the interesting books, most people say well, what the hell is dielectricity? It's like I never heard of that. Even electrical engineers say I've never heard of this. I think I heard one mention of it when I was in college. And this is from Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses. But I had to point out to you who uh, Charles Proteus uh, Steinmetz is. And here you can actually see. You can also see how crooked he is here. His actual body is bent like a boomerang. He was born deformed. And he's a little person. And um, 
Uh, it just turned out to be an absolute uh, genius. Uh, and I'll let you take a look at these pictures. We've got Niels Bohr here. And uh, right here to the right is uh, old Einstein. And right back here, that is Nikola Tesla himself. Right there, that is Nikola Tesla. Now, you're thinking, okay, all these uh, minds here, these famous minds, the only reason why they've got him in the front here is because he's short, right? You put a short person in the front of the camera and the tall people in the back, that's the reason why he's in the front. No, he's not only front, he's only center because he's actually the genius amongst all these famous people. Every, Niels Bohr is over here, Tesla is here behind him. He is the genius amongst all these famous quote-unquote bright minds in this image right here. Fact. Not my opinion. Fact. Um, let's actually take a quote from Electrical Discharge Waves and Impulses, uh, page 14. And let me see. Uh, yeah, here we go. The terminology of electrostatics of many texts. This book was written in 1911. Actually, I think it was written 1909 to 1911. It was published 1911. So over 100 years ago, even 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, 1911, when this book was written by Charles Proteus Steinmetz, um, the complete retardation and suppression of uh, dielectrics and electrostatics had already been firmly implanted in the minds of people, they just talk about electricity, talk about uh, voltage and current and electricity, everything, electricity, electricity, that's all you and I ever were brought up listening to, electricity, this, electricity, most of you never heard of electrostatics or dielectricity, but all the genius minds that gave us the modern world, uh, Faraday, Steinmetz, Tesla, James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, it's dielectricity, 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 and nobody today knows what the hell it is. Like, I have people, a lot, numberless people tell me, like, where the hell are you coming up with this BS word, dielectricity? I never heard of this bullshit. Did you just, like, invent this word? And I'm like, no, the gods of electrical theory use that perpetually instead of discussing electricity. Let me give you a quote from a genius, okay? The guy that actually perfected Nikola Tesla's AC generator. And the guy that really did give us an, our entire current modern world of electrical generators and systems, transformers, capacitors, on and on. Yes, this guy. This little dwarf right here, okay? Um, the terminology of electrostatics of many textbooks, this is 100 years ago, I remember, textbooks still speak of electrical charges on the conductor and the energy stored by them without the consideration that the dielectric energy is not on the surface of the conductor but in the spaces outside and between the conductor just is also the magnetic field. It also goes on too, you want actually definition of electri electricity. Electricity is not uh, a field phenomenon itself, it is actually a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification, i.e. dielectricity times Magnetism equals uh, the electrical current, okay, with given voltage and amperage. Unfortunately, to a large extent, this is on page 13 or 14 of the same book, Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses by Charles Brody Steinmetz. Unfortunately, to a large extent, in dealing with the dielectric fields, the prehistoric conception of electrostatic charges on the conductor still exists, and by its use, destroys the analogy between the two components, listen closely, two components of the electric field, the magnetic and the dielectric, and makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily complicated. Even in 1911, because electrical theory is, you know, some mind-bending stuff, uh, humanity had already retarded um, um, current and understanding of uh, electrical grids and whatnot, even in its infancy, to the very simplex uh, childish concept of electricity. It is, that's all you hear about today. Electricity, right? Electricity this, electricity that. No, 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 no. Electricity is not a thing itself. It is the hybrid of the combination of dielectricity and magnetism that comprises the electrical field. And if you think you're smarter than uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, the guy with endless, endless patents who perfected Tesla's AC generator, as Tesla's AC generator would not have really worked without uh, Charles Brody Steinmetz's refinements. Charles Brody Steinmetz was literally a god of General Electric. General Electric gave him a huge wing to do whatever he want and a blank check to do whatever the hell he wanted. That's how much of a genius that little dwarf was.
General Electric let him do anything he wanted, buy anything he wanted, do anything he wanted. He was that valuable of a person. Okay, this is the guy who literally wrote all the books that formed the band. Nothing has changed. Some minor things have changed, but nothing has changed from the fundamentals that were written in 19... 12 through 1926 by Charles Proteus Steinmetz on electrical currents, voltage, ampers, transient currents, waves, um, all the strange phase phenomena of uh, power stations. This is the guy that perfected all of that stuff. Okay? This guy. So if you think you know more than him, you're a fool. Here, of course, this is also from the same book, Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulse. I think this is page 11. By the way, this is the most important diagram in the universe. This is the electrical field or circuit. The actual broken lines are the dielectric field. This is a cross-section looking end-on of two conductors in an AC current. The actual circular loops, and of course they go off the page here. Those are the magnetic lines of force, and of course the broken lines are the dielectric lines of inertia or true power. And these, of course, exist between the conductors, not in the conductors. This is what people think today. It's like, well, power is going through the conductors right here, like the power lines outside your house. No, 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 no. Yeah, the cross-section of the dielectric and the magnetic, of course, this is the right-hand rule, comprises the electrical. Right here is the electrical. Right here is the electrical. These broken lines are the dielectric. These, uh, these non-broken uh, circular loops are the magnetic. The smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. As you bring these wires closer together, you're able to increase the dielectric or the capacitance. The further apart you actually push them, the more you're actually able to increase the amperage or the magnetic. Here we go. Charles Proteus statement. Magnetic and dielectric field of the conductors are both included in the term electric field. And are, are you listening closely? Are you listening? Are the two components of the electric field of the conductor. Okay? Magnetic field or magnetic flux of the circuit. Phi is proportional to the current I with proportionality factor L, which is called the inductance of the circuit. Phi times phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Electricity is not a thing itself. Okay? Let me repeat that again. Electricity is not a thing itself. Electricity is the composition of, right here, the magnetic and the dielectric. The magnetic and dielectric field of conductors are both included in the term electric field. They comprise what we call the electric field. But the only thing people talk about today in a uh, circuit is the electrical field. Amps, volts, right? Yeah. No. Even in 1911, Charles Proteus Steinmetz was telling people makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily... He, this is Steinmetz bitching and complaining over a hundred years ago about how stupid in his time, people in his time that were you know, building and trying to build electrical grids and systems, they're just electricity, 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 electricity. They didn't actually understand what electricity was. This is, this of course is what a professional would do. He's not actually, you know, uh, um, uh, bitching and complaining. He's basically saying they're idiots, except in a professional manner. Unlike what I'm doing, I'm actually calling them idiots because that's what they are. They're idiots. So, anyway, if you want to download this book, it's a free download off of uh, archive.org. It's called Electrical, Dis Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses by uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. And uh, let me go here to page one. Here we go. I'll let you take a look. Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses, and Other Transients, 1914. Yeah, he wrote this book from 1911, 19... Um, I think this is the second second edition. It is second edition. Here is a book from 1909 to 1911. I think that was the first edition. I could be wrong. But this is the book. And like I said, this guy was a god to General Electric. They gave him carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wanted. And like I said, he's not in the front of this photograph because he's short. He's in the front because he is the brains of all these other people you think are the brains. You heard of Einstein. You heard of Tesla. You've heard of Niels Bohr. Yeah, these are the guys that are actually hovered around the epicenter right here. This guy that you never heard of, this uh, short little person who is bent like a boomerang at the hips and uh, always smoking, like all his pictures, he's smoking a big-ass cigar. He's the brains amongst all these people. He's like, oh, no, Tesla's the brain. Yeah, well, Tesla is the brains, but Tesla's AC generator would not have worked, really. It did work, but not really. It's kind of like comparing an old uh, 
an old Model T Ford to a modern Lamborghini. You know, both of them work, but you know, one is perfected. Uh, Tesla invented the Model T, if you will, of the AC generator, and uh, it took Charles Proteus Steinmetz to turn it into the high-performance, um, low-loss Lamborghini, if you will, of, uh, of power generators, and that's a fact. And uh, there you go, there's the guy you never heard of that is the brains and brilliance behind uh, the modern electrical world. Person you never heard of when you went to school. Here's Charles Proteus Steinmetz.